Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy? Good evening. Tonight, a story about a woman who had everything to live for and yet was unhappy because she wasn't pretty. The story was written for us by Richard Chandler, who two months ago wrote Beirut by Sunrise, an exciting spy story that so many of you like. This new effort is called In Deep. <laughs> Yes, Doctor. Already. Only... Only what? Nothing. I'm sick, I know. And you're going to help me. That's sodium pentothal in the hypodermic, isn't it? You're going to cross-examine me while I'm asleep. Yes, yeah, sort of like that. I'll just hold your arm still. <laughs> don't think so. You know that. That's it. Now start with a hundred and count backwards. One hundred. Ninety-nine. Ninety-eight. Five. That's five. Ninety-four. Ninety-three. Ninety-two. Ninety-three. What comes after ninety-two? I'm a lawyer. I'm an assistant district attorney. I have a good record, best in the office. Why did you choose law for a profession? I... I'm plain. My face. My body. I think anyone would look at twice. You're born pretty or you're not. It's no accomplishment. Skin deep, that's all. They don't realize that if you're not pretty, you've got to be smarter than... Smarter than the pretty one? Got to be smart. Do you like your job? Yes. Roger Demery, the district attorney, he says I'm good. There aren't many women DAs. My job's important. They notice me. And I'm sick now. I'm sick. Why are you sick, Virginia? I don't know. I don't know. It's all right. All right. You're going to get well, Virginia. As soon as we find out why you're sick. You want to get well, don't you? Good. Now, can you remember when you first began to feel bad? Yes, I think I can. There was a trial. Felony case, Charles Ackerman, armed robbery. I was sure I'd get a conviction. I build my case as well. Everyone knows that. I work hard. I go to court to win. The defense attorney, Sibley... I had one from him before. He's tricky this time. Got some of my evidence thrown out. It hurt my case, and I wasn't sure of the verdict. Yuri went out, and for the first time, I wasn't sure. Sir, will you hand the verdict up to the bench? <coughs> Thank you. Jury finds the defendant guilty on all counts. No recommendation for leniency. Maybe I was hard. But I would have lost if I hadn't been. And you felt sick? No. I had a headache. He was guilty. I should have won. There was nothing wrong about it. I know my law. Every case is important. It's all I have. You weren't sure you'd win, so it made you feel bad. Just had the headache. I remember I went to my office. There was this next case. <laughs> this is the attorney's office, Miss Slade. Thanks, dear. Good fight, and we won. Well, I wasn't worried. Not with you on occasion. You sound a little tired. No, I'm fine. Feel great. Why shouldn't I? Then you're ready for the next one. This 
uh, Carol and Rice? Oh, yes, yes. I went over the file last night. With an open verdict from the coroner's jury, it's up to us. How do you see the case? Is it a plain accident, a manslaughter, or what? The way the husband was killed? Could have been murder, too. Yes, I know. But the murder line's pretty vague. It'll take some proving. Well, I've only got the transcript to go by right now, Mr. Demery. I don't want to overlook anything. But if you want to let it go... Oh, uh, you look into some more. I just don't want you to bite off one you can shoot. I never do that, Mr. Demery. Who's the lawyer? Justin, his name. Came out from Chicago. Friend of his, I think. I don't know much about him. Justin? Ray Justin? Do you know him? I might. I knew a Ray Justin once. In law school. All right, Virginia. I'm leaving this Rice girl up to you. You're my agent. If there's anything to it at all, I know you'll find it. I'll make sure, Mr. Demery. I'll see her first thing in the morning. I felt better talking to Mr. Demery. Leaving the whole case in my hands. He didn't do that with everyone. It was a compliment. And this Carolyn Wright, there'd be a lot of publicity on this one. She was social, registering close to it. I've seen her pictures in the place, in the wedding picture they'd use. She was pretty. Her husband was dead. She'd backed the car into him. They'd been at a party drinking. They'd argued. Accident, manslaughter, murder. It was my job to think the worst about her, don't you see? I had to make sure. The next morning I went to the jail and I remember wondering about her attorney. It was the same Ray Justin I knew in school. Oh, I'm sorry. Looking for someone in one of these interrogation rooms. Quite all right. Uh, I'm an attorney. So am I. Oh, maybe you can help. I'm looking for an assistant DA, a character named Slade. They told me... I'm Virginia Slade. Justin. What? Oh, excuse me. I thought Slade would be a man. Well, wait a minute. Don't I know you? Yes, a long time ago. Law school. Slade. Sure, Virginia Slade. The glasses fooled me. <laughs> what do you know? You really remember me? Why, sure. Serious Slade. That's what we used to call you. You didn't know it, though, did you? Yes, I knew it. Hey, wait a minute. I almost forgot. We'll finish reminiscing later. First, I'm going to roast your hide. Uh, why? Well, my client, Carolyn Rice. You people seem to be trying to make something out of an unfortunate accident. No, not if there isn't anything. It's open to question, though. If she's criminally responsible, I've gone over it quite carefully. Well, you're going to have to make a charge. What do you think you can charge her with? District Attorney wants me to look into it, that's all. You're not afraid to have me talk to her, are you? No, of course not. She's already gone through enough, don't you think? Yes, I'm sure she has. They always do. Okay, I'm not going to argue. Huh? I don't have to, because there's nothing. Oh, Carolyn, come on in. You look lovely, dear. How are you? Fine, oh, honey. I do. Under the circumstances. Here, sit down. Oh, uh, uh, this is Virginia Slade. How do you do, Mrs. Rice? I'm the assistant district attorney. Turns out the DA's a woman and an old friend, a classmate. All right, Mrs. Rice, shall we talk? I, I've done so much talking, Miss Slade. I hope Mr. Justin's here. He won't let you say anything wrong, I'm sure. Wrong? What do you mean? Ray... Oh, it's just professional patter, Carol. There's nothing to worry about. These questions are because most of your answers at the coroner's inquest were incomplete, or I don't know. I told them all I remembered, honestly. You remember quarreling with your husband? Yes. He'd been drinking, made sort of a fool of himself, and I wanted to go home. I see. And you left the party and went to the car. Other guests established time at 11.15. Yes, I guess that's right. Please don't make me go through it again. I'm sorry, Mrs. Rice, but it's to your benefit if you can. Let's try, Carol. Just once more and that'll be it. Your husband was killed at 11.45. You got in the car at 11.15, so you just sat in the car a half hour. Yes, I, I guess I did. You were drunk? You were sobering up? No, no, I just had one drink. I don't like But you sat in the car and waited for a half hour. Yes. I was disturbed about quarreling with Sarah. I didn't feel I could drive. I guess I sat there trying to get a hold of myself. Mrs. Rice, did you love your husband? Yes, of course. Well, wait a minute, Virginia. I don't think that... I'm just trying to get answers, Mr. Justin. I'm trying to find out what happened. No one saw it. No one really knows what happened but Mrs. Rice. But I don't know. I don't. Now look, Virginia, please. I'm trying to help Mrs. Rice remember. You remember it, don't you, Mrs. Rice? 
I didn't see him. I couldn't. You remember. You were sitting there in the car waiting. You waited for him to come out. You were angry. I don't know. You said you were disturbed. You were angry. No, I was only... You sat there and waited for him to come out. You watched him. You watched him come toward the car. I didn't see him. He stepped off the curb and he was walking toward the back of the car. Remember? You waited. You watched him in the mirror and waited. Then you jammed the car in reverse and deliberately stepped on the gas hard. No! No, no, I didn't see him. Wait a minute, Miss Yeah, You're not going to get anything this way. Is there something to get? That's just what I want to know. A lawyer all the way from Chicago. This town is full of lawyers. If it was an accident, why a lawyer all the way from Chicago, pretty Mrs. Wright? Don't answer, Carol. That's enough. All right, Miss Slade. We want to be helpful, but you're trying to make a crime out of a tragedy. Don't you have enough legitimate crimes in this city? We want to get the facts, Justin. My job, you know that. You've got all the facts. Carol's telling the truth. It was an accident. There was no intent, and you won't find it. We'll see, Mr. Justin. We'll see. <laughs> Listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, Skin Deep. There's no advance word about what to expect when you meet Millie this Thursday night, but this much is certain there'll be fun when Millie Bronson, played by Elena Verdugo, and her more or less mad mama embark on another excursion into life's problems. Millie's slow motion romance, Alfred Prince Mental's poetry, Mama's figure, Mr. Boone's temper, almost anything can start the fun go round when you meet Millie Thursday night on CBS Radio. Miss Jane, I didn't know what happened to me. The words just poured out of my mouth automatically. I couldn't help myself. You know why, Virginia? I... I guess because I'm a lawyer, I don't have anything else except the law. I've trained myself to think like that. I couldn't stop. I had to find out about Mrs. Rice. It was routine. It was routine. That was the only reason? Yes. What other reason would I have? All right, Virginia. Go on. What happened next? Ray Justin, he... remembered me. I wasn't noticeable in school. I kept to myself. I was too busy for parties. I didn't want to make him angry. It was just my way of handling Mrs. Rice, but I couldn't tell him then. I threatened her with a felony, and I had to follow it through. Look, I want to talk this out with you, Slade. When can we get together? Fine, Ray, but I don't have any free time this week. Will you free after hours? How about dinner? All right. You don't mind. My best work over there. I don't know your town. The hotel's lousy. I'm a fair cook. How about my place? Well, tonight? All right. It's uh, 604 74th place, apartment 12. 8 o'clock? Fine. More coffee? Yes, thanks. Your coffee's very good, by the way. You know, these pictures of the annual, it's hard to believe any of us ever looked like that. Eagerness. All bucking for the Supreme Court. <laughs> but the rest of your books look like they're all law. Yes, all law. I work a lot at home. Shall we get to it, Ray? What did you want to talk about? Yesterday at the jail with Carolyn, I'm not complaining, but I did think you jumped on it pretty hard. No offense. It was just some habit, I guess. You've done pretty well for yourself. Since those pictures in the book? I just practiced what I was taught, that's all. And you charged Carol with second-degree murder. That's right. That's the evaluation. You know, you're wrong. It doesn't make sense. Even manslaughter. Anyone can be wrong. That's why we have courts. Look, let's get out of the courtroom, shall we? I've nosed around town. I know you're good. Let's just talk to each other. Fine with me. You and Mrs. Rice are friends, aren't you? Well, her husband, Jerry, and I were in the war together. I was best man at their wedding. We kept in touch. 
So, yes, I know Carolyn pretty well. She loved Jerry. And I know she'd never get mad enough to kill anybody. It was an accident. The coroner's jury wasn't sure either way. Mrs. Rice wasn't a very good witness for herself. Because she was upset. If you'd... Well, if, if you'd lost her husband that way, wouldn't you be? Sorry, I wouldn't know. I didn't come here to bargain. You can try to make something out of that coroner's verdict if you want to. There are no witnesses. You'll have a tough time proving intent because there isn't any. I was hoping you'd understand what kind of a girl Carolyn really is. You don't have to eulogize her. I understand. What do you mean? I mean, you're her attorney. Her friend. Naturally, you believe in her. The defense attorney always believes in innocence. And the prosecutor always believes in guilt, is that it? No. A prosecutor upholds the law, and the law is impartial. Mm, that's one way of looking at it, but a little machine-like, isn't it, when you're dealing with people? Yes. The only way you can do the job. Then you're going ahead with this crazy prosecution? Not me, Ray. It's the law. Okay. But you're wrong. You're leaving? Sure. You've made me a lot of work in case you get past the preliminary hearing on circumstantial evidence. Wait, isn't there... I mean... Something else to talk about? No, I guess there isn't. Except that outside of business, it's nice to see you, Ray. Outside of business, it's been fun. Good night, old serious player. It is a question of the law, that's all. The law doesn't change because someone's nice or pretty. I've seen the worst kind of murderer look like an angel. Ray knows that. A person can be one thing all his life and change in a second. The law is reason, not emotion. And he, he was basing it all on emotion. And the dog. Yes. He shouldn't have done that. He got him. Wasn't it natural for him to feel that way? I, I don't know. I, I hadn't seen Ray. I hadn't seen anybody like that. In a long time. I always had so much work. I I didn't want to talk law. I wanted to talk about other things, but I got mad and I couldn't. Why? He said I was wrong. He said I didn't have a case against Mrs. Rice, but I did. You can't tell a person is innocent by looking at them. They'd argued and she'd killed her husband. I could put together a case. I knew I could. I had a continual headache. It made it hard to work. So I found my way. You okay if I polish the car while we talk, Miss Slade? Got to drive the Rockwells in an hour. Just a few questions, Mr. Reese. How long has he chauffeured the Rockwell? Three years. You drove them to the party that evening, waited in the car? Yes, ma'am. I was in a car. Vice car was parked across the street. All I want to know is what you saw. Well, I was sitting there reading and saw Mrs. Rice come out and get in her car. And I thought, that's funny, quitting a party this soon. She started the car, moved it a bit, and then stopped it. I didn't know what she was doing. I looked at her now and then. She started the car again. She sat there. Did she catch anything? The rear view mirror, did she adjust her door? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe she did. And she seemed upset. She wasn't normal, natural. She was across the street. But yeah, I guess so. Then you saw Mr. Rice coming toward the car. Yeah. I heard him stumble and weaving, but nothing bad. Just looked down at my newspaper for a second and whammo. And everybody else came outside and Mrs. Rice went all to pieces. Pretty face of hers all crisp. <laughs> would be easy with the chauffeur as a witness. That's all I needed. He'd seen it happen, seen what Mrs. Rice conveniently couldn't remember. I wasn't wrong about her. She was emotional. I knew her kind. I could get her to admit she meant to do it at the trial. Even if it had been in her mind just one second, one vicious, unreasonable second of only wanting to hurt him, it was murder. She felt fine. Nothing to worry about. But I was. Somehow, somehow I was worried. And the day of the hearing that morning, we were waiting for the judge and Ray came over to my table. 
because she was pretty. I was wrong, wrong from the beginning. Far from being honest about the law, the law is all I have. But made you think, Dickie, that moment at the hearing when you realized what you were really doing, that you could be like that. You shut it out of your mind, but you still felt sick. Yes. I couldn't go on with it. I was... You couldn't continue... If you were sick, could you? So, you got good news. A part of you recognized that the basis for your antagonism toward Carolyn was that she was pretty and you couldn't face knowing her. So, to protect yourself, you got good news so that you wouldn't have to go out with it. You can see that now. Can't you, Virginia? Yes. Yes. Now you'll get well. Rest now, Virginia. Lots of rest. And you'll get well. Hi, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. They told me you were out on the stairs. How's the sanitarium treating you? Just fine, Ray. Nice of you to come back. Flying back to Chicago today. I wanted to say goodbye. Oh. How's Mrs. Wright? Coming along fine. Just like you. I'm glad. I'd like to tell her how sad. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. When are they going to let you go back to work? Two more weeks, they said. I've resigned from the DA's office. Oh? Yes, I'm going to set up an office of my own. Try your side. Thanks. You'll make a good one. I wish you all the luck in the world. Thanks. I hope we'll see each other again. Sure. I'll be back. You know, you cook a good dinner. Got a confession. Hmm? 
I had it sent in. But I'm going to learn how to cook. I'll do it myself next time. Well, hey, it's time. Just an hour to catch my plane. You get well now, Virginia. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, Ray. I'll be looking for you. I'll be back. and Elliot Lewis on stage. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. Going to be home tomorrow during the day, here are two things to do about it. Enjoy Arthur Godfrey time with all the little Godfreys and Art Linkletter's house party, both on CBS Radio. They're yours Monday through Friday in the daytime over most of these same stations. Star daytime attractions at the Star's Address. And now once again, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. <laughs> Our thanks tonight to Richard Chandley for his story, Skin Deep. Janet Waldo, who is Corliss Archer to most of you, was kind enough to join us tonight and played Carolyn. Broadway's My Beat supplied us with Danny Clover when Larry Thor came by to play the D.A., Mr. Demery. Herb Butterfield returned to our company to play my doctor tonight. Herbert Rawlinson, whose fan club everyone is a member of, was the judge, and Paul Freeze played the chauffeur. Next week is very special for us because we will celebrate with all of you our 10th wedding anniversary. And to help us, Ray Noble will be our guest in order that we might present for ourselves and all of you our happy anniversary album. Until next week, then, thank you for listening. Good night. Good night. Music for tonight's story was composed and conducted by Fred Steiner. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Noble, and the program is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. George Walsh speaking. And remember, listen while you work. Enjoy Ma Perkins every Monday through Friday in the daytime on the CBS Radio Network.